everybody welcome back to the channel we know it has been a solid minute since we've posted any videos we've been on a bit of a hiatus uh, in 2022 but we are happy to be back with not only more content but more batmobile content last time you saw us with the trailblazer we were out at tulsa raceway park back in october and put down our best et in this car to date we ran an 11.8 89, I don't remember the mile per hour, but I'll cut that in here real quick. <laughs> now, as you can guess at this point, we have improved upon the Trailblazer a little bit since you last saw it. Let's go take a look at what some of the changes are and what we're planning on doing today. Now, before I get on talking about the Batmobile and what all we've done here, I will point out we are out here in Broken Arrow at ET Motorsports. Unfortunately, they don't have a sign anywhere for me to point to, uh, but we are at ET Motorsports to get a, another dyno tune on this bad boy right here. Now, the last time we dyno tuned it was about a year and a half ago after we had done some minor changes, uh, fuel pump injectors, a few items like that. Get this guy popped open and we can show you some of the latest modifications we have made. Okay, so the big change for this go around is the intake manifold. We have swapped out the stock intake manifold for a LSX RT 102 millimeter. Um, I actually ended up going this route because uh, another member of the Trailblazer Super Sport community happened to be running the same thing and he's doing pretty well and frankly we didn't want to get too wild with the changes you know we got to keep things in a budget <laughs> um, but we have the intake manifold we've added a bracket and moved our nitrous solenoids around so they're all mounted over here now we've switched from the fogger system that used to be in the intake into uh, a plate kit now it's a two-stage plate kit but we have our hard lines running for just a single stage and capped off the second stage. Uh, along with that plate kit, we also upgraded to 102 millimeter throttle body, which is connected to a fender well intake with a LS7 mass airflow sensor. So you can see it'll come around here. You can see he's going right down through the fender well and poking out right there. So ideally trying to get some cooler air flowing into the car uh, rather than just sucking in all that hot air from the engine bay. We also did add a little two-step module to help with our launches off the line and we ran an additional hard line so we can get our bottle pressure readings right up front here. Makes it a little bit easier to have this up here uh, since the bottle is all the way in the back of the car and it's kind of hard to see back here whenever you're actually driving. So if we pop this guy open. You can see in addition to the modifications up front, we've also done a little bit of weight reduction and we've pulled the back seats out of here we took out all the carpeting, all the little plastic bits, got rid of as much weight as possible. And then we're also running the 10 pound bottle instead of the 15 pound bottle. So at this point, we are going to go inside, talk to Mr. Chance Todd, the owner of ET Motorsports, uh, get a little bit of insight on his company, and then we'll roll the trailblazer in and get her on the dyno and see what kind of numbers we can put down. All right, guys, so we are here with uh, Chance Todd, the owner of right. ET Motorsports. It's my understanding that this is like, this is your side project. This yeah. isn't even your main gig. Yeah, nights and weekends, man. We do it 
Well, we'll get here about 4.30 and work till midnight to 2 p.m., sometimes 6 a.m. if the <laughs> job requires it, whatever it takes. So just started for fun and it took off. Yeah, like I think taking off is a good way uh, to state it. I mean, as you can see here, guys, I mean, all the way back and then obviously over here where we're going to be living today uh in ground dyno i mean i would say for a side gig this is doing pretty well yeah it's doing all right it's a lot of fun a lot of stress at times but a lot of fun too so now just to kind of get a an idea here of what's going on today now although we are here using your dyno you won't be actually physically the person doing the tuning right no, no we use ortiz performance out of san benito texas and he does our remote tuning he's tunes all over the world that exact same way. He's lucky when he gets to sit there on his couch watching TV in the AC and just popping out <laughs> tunes all day. But yeah, so we basically became a dealer for him and you know, he scheduled an appointment just like you would any other shop, an in-house tuner. We sit down, we go back and forth in, get your stuff right. He does everything from Mustangs to LS and now they're talking about dabbing a little bit into the Mopar world, which terrifies oh. me. But <laughs> yeah, if Mustangs aren't scary enough, right. <laughs> if our hands aren't full enough, it's more like oh yeah, right. for real. Well, that's awesome. Well, dude, I I know you've got things to do yes, since sir. you actually don't have to uh, handle too much today. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I won't keep you here, but I really appreciate you letting us come out, film, and you know make use of your dyno and check out the awesome shop. Uh. You know, we're always happy to meet new people that are in the community that have businesses going on. I mean, this was word of mouth. Like it wasn't like I found you online. It was someone said something and you know, they pointed out three or four other people that were also like, yeah, this guy's pretty good. So That's you know, it should be, man. That's, it, it's yeah. amazing that word of mouth got you all the oh, way yeah. to this. It's insane. Almost man, I'd say 90% of people, hey man, my buddy told you about us. You know, hey man, my buddy said this. <laughs> right. hey, sweet. I mean, we'll take it. Well, so yeah. obviously we're doing something right. Yeah, for real. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the outcome. The Batmobile has been dying for a oh, tune. Oh man, I've been curious. I'm curious to see what it does. Yeah, we're well, we got our guesses. I think uh, Jason's going to roll up here in a bit. We'll probably play a little game of predictions yeah. and, and see what it does. We got the board. Oh yeah. Yeah, we got to make it on the board. Board's short. Yeah. We got to add, add some numbers to that. Yeah. Well, hell yeah, man. Well, do your thing. Absolutely. Thank you very much. We appreciate it, man. Yeah, I'll be letting you know uh, what the numbers look like. All right. <laughs> Hey, so bonus surprise, Mr. Chris Story is Hello. here to help us out today because, as it turns out, he works here too. Kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of. Enough. Fully, fully part time. Yeah. Fully part time. Fully yeah. part time. Fully optional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Great stuff. So we got to get this guy strapped down and ready to rock. All right, guys. We got her strapped to the ground, fans ready to get turned on. Uh, Chris is over in here just getting the beep boops ready. So what are you thinking, Jason? Uh, predictions. Not on uh, spray, but on motor only. Where are you, where do you think we're going to be? 402. 402? Yeah. 515 on spray. 402 on motor, 515 on spray. Okay. I think that's pretty reasonable. We'll see. Given that it ran barely 380 last time without these changes on motor, I'd say that's uh, some reasonable gains. So after we get the, the basic, like idle log tip-in stuff figured out, then we do probably one or two watt pulls because they're going to be fairly simple at being an NA deal, and then we'll do like one or two nitrous pulls. Just to get. Okay, cool. Pretty far or? It seems pretty close. Oh, okay. It's a little lean, but it's pretty close. Hell yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, also, it, it will be good to know as well that your numbers are going to be a smidge smaller because we're dynoing in second gear. Oh, yeah. Stock drive shaft truck stuff. And I don't, so they don't, they vibrate really hard past 120 mile an hour. Yeah. And so I don't want it to come apart. 
we're gonna try to keep the drive shaft in it. So okay. Uh, hey, I'm all for not uh, destroying anything, <laughs> yeah. uh, of course. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that that's what we did the last time around too. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure that's it. Yeah. All right, here we go. more like it right there <laughs> much much better sounding what you're making what I can't hear what did he say I, I didn't hear him what did he say he said he's got it he's trying to calculate the wheel speed the rpm oh but apparently it made 464 which is not that's that's not that real. can't be right that's so, that's wrong. Yeah, he's trying to figure out a, a wheel because it's not picking up RPM signal. Oh. So he's trying to do it through wheel speed and calculate it through wheel speed. Oh, okay. But 464 is not even close. I wonder why it's not picking up RPM. He said it does that sometimes. But I don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, whatever. But 464 is not a real number. Oh, uh, 460. That's my new number. 464. Put it up on the board. <laughs> that's the number. What's it gonna make on nitrous? 700? <laughs> okay, at this point, we're playing some more of that waiting game. We got some of those base runs in. The tuner out in New Jersey has, you know, made some tweaks and taking a look at the file, sending us back another file uh, to upload and attempt uh, another pull on. When your tuner is in a completely different state working remotely, there's a little bit of an additional waiting period that you wouldn't normally have if your tuner's sitting in the driving seat or in the driver's seat. Um, so yeah, we're just waiting on a new file. We'll get it loaded in and do another pull. All right, here we go. told me to leave the crappy tires on it still. That's because dinos eat them up. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're just about done doing the NA tuning at this point. So we made 393, 393 on motor, and it was like 385 torque or something like that. Uh, three, 359. 359 uh, torque. So we're going to do one more pull NA to just even things out, make sure it's all good to go and then we will run our last poll with the nitrous and see how good it runs. Uh, we're guessing somewhere between 500 and 515 is where it's gonna land on nitrous, but uh, we just have to wait for the tuner to do the beep boops and send us the file, and then we can do one more NA, make sure it's solid, and open the bottle up. combat that little bit of spinning on the dyno we had we just gotta adjust and tighten her up uh, a tiny bit good, i gave her two clicks yeah, we're good. yeah nice and tight now It 
was identical. What? It was identical power. Identical power? All right. Hey, they didn't spin this time either, so that's good. Yeah, well, the one there it spun, it read 15 horsepower. 15? Yeah. Lost <laughs> 15 on the spin? No, it read 15. 15 horses, baby. He's a ripper. <laughs> Yeah, it had a little different torque reading that time. We're at 498 torque for that. Slightly lower torque, but roughly the same horsepower. Yeah. Well, what happened was what happened was <laughs> is when it when it flashed really hard when the converter hit it, it whacked it really hard. And so that's where we get that crazy 498 torque number. Ah. However, your average torque, which is going to be generally where you're closer to, is 300 well, 360. Again. So. Okay. About the same. About the same, yeah. Hey, that's not bad, but it's all higher than I was previously, which is what we were going for. Yep. So I did 393.7 the first time and did 393.6 this time. All right. <laughs> Can't be mad at that. Now we open the bottle. Yeah, we, does this mean we're ready to open the bottle now? Uh, I think so. Let her eat! Let me double check with uh, Poppy Tuna. Okay. Hell yeah. See how our bottle pressure is looking now. Should be. Oh yeah. On the money. Perfect. adjustments and gonna try again might have to swap the jets out a little bit and go with a smaller fuel jet um, but they're just adjusting the two now and we'll do one more hit on nitrous and see how it does all right Chris so where are we at now well we're gonna do one more nitrous pull and hopefully my dyno reads like it should <laughs> and uh, make sure everything's good the last the not the last nitrous pull went really good uh, in the log it's kind of fat and happy, but we went by Nitrous Express, Nitrous Express's jet charting sheet, mm -hmm. and it's it tends to be about two jets too fat, um, mm -hmm. just to keep stuff safe. Um, and so we'll keep it two jets too fat for this this go around, um, and then whenever we go to the track with it, we'll start pulling some fuel out of it and, and uh, really start fine tuning it then. But. This will get you on the road, and we, we'll start spraying the shit out of it and have some fun. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> get the fans going. And it's time to rock. Blew the connection out of the solenoid. Yeah, it didn't read any power. What? It didn't read any power. Yeah, like. It... Say what? It was read 199 horsepower. Oh, yeah, that ain't nothing. Yeah. Hey, I mean. Yeah, I thought, I was watching and I thought I saw a little spray come out. And this guy. Oh, yeah, that dude just flew. He just came right out. Well, that sucks. I, mean, I popped it back in, but that doesn't mean anything, really. Which part came out? Uh, this uh, hard line connection. I've popped it back in, but this guy, he just popped right out of there. Oh, really? Yeah. 
I mean, I had oh, tight. Yeah, that didn't spray anything, but yeah, it sprayed all, all came out here. <laughs> yeah, it just popped out. Yeah, just uh, it's like it blew it out of there. What? Yeah. Um, okay, let's pull it out real quick. Okay, let's look at that. <laughs> All right, guys, so we are done running the nitrous right now because as it turns out, and you might have caught it, and I'll play it back here in slow motion, uh, the nitrous was just spraying right out of the solenoid and into the air. Uh, so it was just dumping a whole bunch of fuel into the intake. Um, do that little component popping out. As it turns out, uh, I was supposed to put a flare on those uh, hard lines. So, got a flare kit back at the house in the garage. We'll uh, put a flare on those, get it reinstalled, and then try to make a pass on nitrous again at some other point. But uh, for now, we're just gonna get it off the dyno, uh, take it out, NA, and run it around, make sure everything's good, and uh, call it a night. <laughs> Gotta go feel the horse puppy, baby. Yeah. The new horse torques we found. All the new horse torques that are added. It's kind of a bummer that we can't get the nitrous thing right now, but you know what? It's okay. I'd rather that happen here right now than at the racetrack or something. Right. So that's okay. I mean, that's the whole point of a dyno. It's not necessarily to just get numbers out of it. It's to test and to figure out what's going to come loose if it's going to come loose. Right. Well, yeah, and that's why I definitely wanted to do this before doing anything else because uh i'm the one who uh put all this in <laughs> so i'm kind of like yeah let's test it first make yeah. sure i did it right and clearly not all of it was done right but if that's the worst piece of like things that were done incorrectly was i forgot to put a flare on something right then i i think i did okay <laughs> you know what we could do real quick what I almost forgot. I was so disappointed about the nitrous that I was just kind of like, well, the day's over now. <laughs> well, the day's definitely not over. We have burnouts and donuts and tomfoolery to go do. Well, I don't, I don't know about doing any donuts <laughs> right now, but maybe we'll get some burnouts, but we're definitely, definitely testing that two-step. Yeah, for sure. So we are all done now with the dyno tuning, street checking, the works uh there's just one more thing to do a final test on and that is the two-step which we're going to do right now okay here we go first test <laughs> that was it definitely pushed through the brakes a little bit